The goal of electroencephalography, EEG, is to measure the activity of the brain. However, it can be confusing to figure out what exactly EEG is measuring. Action potentials are the building blocks for electrical signaling in the brain. However, they are not what EEG actually records. Instead, the longer, slower, postsynaptic potentials are better able to be picked up by the sensors. In this video, we will explain action potentials and postsynaptic potentials from an electrophysiological perspective and point out important differences between the two. First, action potentials. In the brain, neurons communicate with each other via electrochemical signals. The electrical signals arise from action potentials generated within each neuron. An action potential is the rapid change in voltage within a neuron. The process leading to an action potential begins with a difference in charge between the inside and outside of the neuron, called an electrochemical gradient. At rest, the electrical charge within the neuron is more negative than the charge outside of the neuron. However, when the neuron receives a signal strong enough to exceed threshold, or in other words, when enough positively charged ions flow into the neuron, this changes the permeability of the cell, thus letting more ions cross the membrane, causing an upward spike in voltage. The upward spike in potential travels down the axon by increasing the permeability of the next location of the membrane. This traveling positive spike is the action potential, and it can only move in one direction, towards the axon terminal. As you can see, action potentials are all-or-none responses that happen very quickly. They are mere blips of activity, and they are always the same amplitude, and always excitatory. Although action potentials are the electrical language neurons use to communicate, they are not the signals EEG actually measures. Now we will explain postsynaptic potentials. When the axon of the presynaptic neuron releases neurotransmitters into the synapse, the neurotransmitters bind to the postsynaptic receptors on the next cell's dendrites. Like in the action potential, this binding triggers an increase in the permeability of the cell membrane, which changes the net charge at the reception site, and these changes are postsynaptic potentials. However, unlike action potentials, postsynaptic potentials can be depolarizing and excitatory, or hyperpolarizing and inhibitory. This contrasts with an action potential, which is only excitatory. Unlike action potentials, postsynaptic potentials are graded responses, which means they can vary in amplitude depending on the strength of the signal. As you can see here, postsynaptic potentials last far longer than action potentials, but are also smaller in amplitude and weaken as they travel. But look what happens when multiple signals sum together. The threshold is reached and a new action potential is fired. The slower timing and larger span of postsynaptic potentials are reasons why they are better for EEG recordings. 